Right, in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to three, maybe four clubs that are going to help solve a huge problem that you might have with your game right now. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Now, we all know, most of you know, Lewis Johnson, head professionally at Hollywell Golf Club. You've got a razor sharp short game. That wasn't easy to that's say, very, mate. That's very kind. <laughs> well, you have. It's a real standout part of what differs real good players, professionals in this case, from average golfers. And what I want you to do in today's video is explain to me and our audience the technique that you use, which really does simplify the chipping process. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. That's the that's number one. Everyone always says, oh, you make that look easy, you make it look simple. And that's what we're going to try and do and he does it in a very different way than I expected. So what we're gonna have a look at today is chipping. So you hear a lot of different things about putting the ball position back, weight forward, club here, hinge here. I think what we wanna try and do today is just look at one simple technique or method that clarifies everything and makes it really simple and easy around the greens. So first scenario, 15, 20 yards worth of fairway, flag another 20 yards further on yeah you've handed me a 60 degree wedge and you said step one is very much about ball position yeah so really simple shot yeah um you wouldn't take out 60 in this no, no i don't think many not. people would would they but the, i want to really emphasize how how simple we're trying to make it so step one ball position dead easy why would we change it club wants to be used in a certain manner um got bounce like like all the other irons let's just keep it in the middle weight distribution 50 50 and just use it as the club's designed to be used so, so, so no, naturally in this position my mentality would be i'm perhaps positioning this further back in my stance because of the type of shots and the loft that i've yeah, got exactly and what that. you're saying is don't do that that's what we run into all the time is you know there's a lot of information out there but let's simplify it let's get it in the middle if we move it back it creates variables we, we um, reduce the bounce um and, and, and just you know on a flat surface you you know what that's going to do it's going to make the ball go a little bit lower but in terms of all we're looking at is consistent strike let's make it nice and easy to keep it the same as what we do with all our other items so step one yeah ball always in the middle of the stance yeah absolutely right so step one you talked about being center of stance but now step two you're talking about widening that stance or potentially yeah, widening that stance. yeah widening or narrowing yeah um i think a lot of people ask me what the body should be doing you know when we're chipping pitching um and to simplify it really um a great way of controlling the distance is as you move closer to the hole we're just going to narrow the stance as we get further away we're just going to widen them uh, and and really simply is the wider the stance the more the hips and the shoulders are going to want to rotate the narrower you are the less they're going to wa want to rotate uh, and that really is it so rotation is a it, you know it's a it's a form of power mm. um and obviously when we're around here i see a lot of people hitting it too hard or, or let's say struggling with distance control um so a really good way of simplifying that is as we get closer narrow up so where we're at right now again for a similar not too dissimilar shorter shot than we had previously again it's about almost a, a feet together but still that same principle is exactly. even with feet together that ball is dead center of the stance though exactly yeah, yeah. absolutely so whether it's wide or, or really where your feet are really really ball close center. ball in the center right so we've got two steps there ultimately ball in the middle of your stance no matter what the situation and the either narrowing or widening of your stance depending on the distance you are from the shot from the flag that you're trying to execute we now need stage three Lou because we've got to hit a ball right okay so for stage three Lou we're looking at going a little bit further away from the flag yeah and we've got two different scenarios we've set up um Situation number one is we've got a little bit of a grass mound in front of us, so an obstacle in the way, if you like, we're going to need a bit of height in the chip shot. And then where we're stood right now, there's nothing between us and the yeah. flag, but a little bit more distance. So now we're looking at exactly the same principles, but maybe a change of club. Exactly, yes. When we're talking about it, the ball position is going to stay consistent. Um, judging distance, so how far away we're going to sort of um, rotate a little bit differently. So width of stance is going to help that. This third one really is... You, the club is going to dictate um, what we're going to do. So um, simplifying it, I would highly recommend going for you know, an eight iron, a nine iron, mm. you know, keeping it nice and simple. In this position we're at now. Exactly, yeah. So there's nothing in the way. Simplifying it is that the club's going to help you. It's yeah. going to create, there's less loft, it's going to create more power. So the club's going to have to move 
shorter yep. shorter distance it's going to be a more consistent strike okay okay so that's really it so all of the stuff we've spoken about is going to change isn't it so we we've got the is it, i think we've got a nine, nine iron, iron there haven't we yeah so the nine iron so you've got more loft uh, less loft on yeah. this so you, you can go really you can go really quite narrow in the stance can't you because okay. you've got the, yeah so balls in the middle there the and then here really the club if you grab, grab hold of it there mate perfect the club really doesn't have to move too much no. there doesn't have to be any hinge any variables that's it so it's just a simple rock and this really is a simple method but tying it in with narrowing of the stance ball position in the middle should be a nice clean consistent shot there we go so there's not a lot that can go wrong with that is there no and uh just some feedback from me just executing the shot and i must admit uh if I'm honest with you, this is not how I play my chip shots currently, but I found it to be in a very uh, easy position in the centre, and um, it was a very simplistic message. A lot of people honest, find yeah. this different, yeah. but, but easier, it and was, I say, yeah. well, that's exactly why, why we're doing it. So we'll now go on to position, what I call it A, with, what have you got in the hand there? Yes, yeah, so I've got lob edge again, so you think I'm making it more difficult, but yeah. we're going to find out. And then we're going to see what we need to do just to perhaps extend that stroke, change of club, to get ourselves with a bit of loft and height over the uh, grasp mound, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, same method, yeah. Right, okay, Lou, so grass mound, same distance from flag. I've got ball position and I've got a 60 degree wedge. Yeah. I've got the same stance as what I just applied to the nine iron, but that's got to change, has it? Yeah, absolutely. So ball position's going to stay the same. Yeah. But you know that you've got 60. Yeah. Perfect. So you're exactly, yeah, so you, you need a little bit more rotation. It's going to give me a little bit of a longer swing. That's it. So ideally, if the mound's not there, we'll stick with this one. The mound is. We need a bit of height. So we've changed the club. But same method. Yeah. Uh, we're just applying you a little bit different. And if you'll notice as the lesson's gone on, I'm sort of grasping this now. So, That's it. So it's kind of That's like... That's it. We want to try and, I want to try and put across that this is easy. Yeah. I want people to try this. Yeah. It's going to it's going to save a lot of people a lot of shots and really clarify a lot of things. If, well, again, so if I get it right in my head, if I get this out properly, the more loft, widen the stance a bit, the longer the swing becomes, yeah. travelling the sort of greater distance. Yeah. And less and aloft you can narrow it yeah. same distance shorter swing yeah. that's it you want the swing nice and short but sometimes that doesn't always apply so i'm just giving you the tools there to widen up but keep the consistency shall i try this let's do it Ooh. so what if, would be what would be your feedback on that well for, for, simple Simple, I think that's the, the greatest thing about the uh, lesson. I've learned something already. Um, but I think what you notice from the shots, again, is that the change in club, the change in loft, effectively, totally different ball flight, totally different length of swing, and did everything that yeah. uh, you suggested. We popped the ball up there then with the loft, but had to go for a longer swing. That's it. But the ball position in the middle of the stance was the big game changer for me and meant that I got a little bit more consistent strike. Is that correct? That's exactly it. We're just trying to take out the variables, keep it nice and simple, and then hopefully that will transfer into more consistent shots. Well, I think at the beginning of the video, I said that if you want, if you're struggling with your chipping game, you want a simplistic method. There are obviously many different uh, ways in which we can progress all of this, but I think what's nice about that is you've just got a couple of things. Remember those three steps, was it, that we went through? That's all you've got to consider each time you find yourself in and around the green and hopefully it just means that you just get a little bit more consistent I and mean, ultimately don't drop shots where we uh, often quite find that we do we've got all the, we've got the ball all the way from tee to green and then we mess it all up when we're sort of 20 30 yards away that's it yeah and that's because you know ultimately a lot of people try and do something different around the yeah. greens and try and keep it the same what you practice down the driving range you know we can transfer that in and around the greens right thank you for watching thanks to lewis for today's lesson don't forget Comments down below and feedback. Go out and try it for yourself and then maybe come back to the video and also drop us a comment as well. Hit that like and subscribe if you don't already. All them things and we will both see you very, very soon. 15, 20, are you going to propose? By the way? Absolutely, yeah. So <laughs> I'll go down on two knees. So I think what we... What? I'll start again. So, <laughs>